Hi, I'm Robert Dick, and this is the first of my new series of videos in collaboration with Amadeus Flutes. And this series is going to be focused on basics of traditional flute playing. And um, given that opening lick I just played, it's not surprising that this one is about articulation. Now, <clears throat> today I'm using a Amadeus Model 600 flute. It's um, not a very expensive instrument, but I think it plays wonderfully. And it has a hand finger silver head joint and a plated um, body and mechanism. So, um, I'm quite happy with it. So, um, articulation. Probably the single most nettlesome aspect of flute technique. Julius Baker used to make this joke at master classes all the time that the flute is a terrific instrument after you start it and before you stop it. Um, once it's going, life is nice. It's starting and stopping the thing that can be the veil of tears. Um, all too often, flute performance is characterized by lack of clear articulation. And articulations are the consonants in the languages of music. And in spoken language, consonants enable us to understand meaning. And articulations in music do the same thing. They clarify and uh, make immediate the meaning of the phrasing. Now, if in spoken language we were to um, start removing the consonants, so as I speak, the consonants are going to start to become a little vaguer and uh, vaguer until I go, oh, oh, more, more. So what happened there? Can't understand thing. So now, as we begin to bring the consonants back and make them nice and clear, suddenly, not only is the meaning clear, but the meaning is going to clearly project. And that's what we'd like. Now, when I was a student, I was taught that the way one articulates is the air comes up in a steady stream and the tongue goes snippity snip 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 snip. And, you know, it never really worked all that well. And when I um, went to Europe for the first time in my 20s, I heard French and English players with amazing articulation. And I've got to say, it really kind of bent my head, and I thought, how do they do it? I've got to learn that. So, um, and I didn't have a clue. So, <laughs> I was fortunate in being invited to give a lecture at the Paris Conservatory on multiphonics and uh, contemporary music. And uh, this was at the time when Jean-Pierre Rampal was teaching the class there. And, um, and I stayed, of course, and observed Ron Paul teach. Um, I mean, I couldn't miss it. And the subject of articulation came up, which was such a great stroke of luck for me, and it changed my life. Now, Ron Paul's first comment on articulation was, we articulate from our drum. I don't know if you can see my belly, but I assure you it's there. So, <laughs> and I'm patting it. Now, um, what does that actually mean? Um, well, it means that instead of the air coming up in this smooth stream, the air is going to come up already shaped into the shapes of the articulated notes. So, we're going to use a breath articulation. That was with no tonguing, and 
the tongue then organizes and cleans up and makes beautiful the, the beginnings of each, excuse me, each articulated note. Now, so we've got to start by learning the breath articulation, and let's begin on that right now. Slow down, get patient, get determined, and get Toffinelle number four out and start on um, A minor, not C major. We're not going to begin this with trying to do breath attacks on low C. Um, that's a great recipe to make yourself nuts. So um, instead, we'll start on A. The pattern is going to take us down to low notes soon enough. So, here's what's going on. Before I play the first note, several things are happening. One is that I'm hearing it. Now, I don't have perfect pitch, and I need the first pitch from somewhere. So, um, to help me hear it, there it is. I'll just give it to myself. But from there on, I'm going to try to operate with relative pitch and be able to hear. But, you know, if I'm not absolutely sure, I'll just give myself the note. But I'm not going to depend on hearing the note come from the flute as the first time I hear it. Because real musicianship comes from hearing before you play. And developing that even in these simple scale passages, is an incredibly important first step. So, number one, hear the A. Number two, get the throat tuning set. Now, if you are not familiar with throat tuning, please check out my videos, Throat Tuning Parts 1, 2, and 3. Please also get a copy of my book, Tone Development Through Extended Techniques, and work on throat tuning there. It will be the answer, and you can free yourself from bad days. There's no reason to have them, and throat tuning is going to be the answer. It's the cure. So now that you know it exists, you definitely want to use it. Okay, so I've pre-heard the A. I've set my vocal cords to silently be singing this A, and now I'm going to set my embouchure and go for it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I'll do it again. see that there's much more embouchure action in a simple articulated staccato note than you might have thought. Every note has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning we want to have as quickly as possible so the note doesn't go Most flutists play notes with very rounded beginnings and that's can be really quite lovely, but when it's all the same, it does get old. So we want to have notes also that can have a very clear instant start. And it's going to be very harmonically rich. Now, as the note ends, two things are going to happen, not one. The note is, of course, going to get softer and stop, but it's also going to change color as we take the harmonics out of the sound. Okay, and that's what gives the note this live quality to its ending, instead of just, uh, uh ooh, ooh this resonant ending where the note will stay in the listener's ear. 
Okay, so go slowly. Make sure you are pre-hearing every note before you do it. If I was to sing the throat tuning out loud, it would be like this. Okay? And more than anything else in music, pre-hearing, which we learn gradually, by doing gradually. Um, if your background is strictly as a classical player as mine was, I was never asked to pre-hear. Well, I'm asking you now, and music has always been asking you. So, now, it's so easy to say, it's not the easiest thing to do, but you can get to it in steps. So, we'll just start making these first steps. Then, no broken notes are accepted. There are certainly going to be broken notes, and if you're really doing this exercise with energy and intensity, you're going to bust quite a few of them, um, you know? And when you do, you know, bang them right out of the park, you know? Loud foul balls, not little, little dribblers. Um, so, um, but fix them. If you have a broken note and you go on, you've accepted it. And the reality is that you have practiced breaking the note. And you've gotten better at it, too. So if you fix the note, then you have practiced getting to this note correctly and well. And as you fix it, don't just fix the note that broke, but go back at least one note preferably two or three, but at least one, and make the change to the note that broke successfully. And don't go on until it does work. That's what rigorous practice is about, and you'll really get the most benefit from that. Now, um, the famous baseball announcer Tim McCarver's got a fabulous saying, which I love, it's not the pitch, it's how you got there. And it really does apply to us. So make sure that you get there really well. Now, after a while, when you're doing, doing scales, also use this, say, in Toffinel 12, which is an arpeggi arpeggiated pattern. forget to then also go softly as well as loud. advice there, went back and fixed that note that I wasn't quite satisfied with. Now, in a week or two, you're going to feel like, gee whiz, I've been going awfully slowly for an awfully long time. It's time to go faster. Now, when you do, you'll find that an individual abdominal motion <laughs> for every note, well, there's just no time for, you know, the abdomen to go in, out, in, out, in, out for every note. So instead, we're going to do a longer motion with steps in it. It's, it's kind of like, um, you know, a sort of massive vibrato, which is going to be used to support the articulation that the tongue will be doing. no tonguing at all. And 
you know, getting the coordination going will take a little time. And again, no accepting broken notes. Fix them. All right. And now, in the next video, I'm going to go into much more detail about the actual action of the tongue. But let me uh, quickly jump ahead to that and say we're going to use French school articulation. And I think every flutist should learn this. Now, there is no single way to tongue. The music that you're playing determines the mode of production. But as the basic way of tonguing, the forward tonguing, where you tongue between your teeth, works much better than tonguing behind the teeth. And, um, you know, please don't accept any nonsense about, well, you can't do this if you don't speak the language. You can learn it. You know, I learned it. Lots of other people have learned it, and you will too. And you're going to get great at it if you just, um, you know, are willing to go through the more difficult initial phases until this new coordination, if, if, you're, if you've been articulating in the basic um, American um, way, to, 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 with the T up on the um, hard palate right above the roots of the teeth. And it takes a little time for your tongue to learn to, 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 to. but um, it really pays off. Uh, here's American tonguing. And here's forward tonguing. One more time. See, it's just so much more clear and vibrant and, um, you know, just visceral. So, um, so take your time. Now, the tip of the tongue, the upper tip of the tongue, uh, is going to touch that tip of the upper teeth. We're not going to go through the lips. And um, that's something called pop tonguing, and it's a, you know, it's got its moments, but it's not a basic way of tonguing. And if you are going through the lips, well, things are going to get messy all the time. Um, uh, Sir James Galway refers to moving through the, 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 t the teeth to the lips as a recipe for disaster, and um, right he is. So, okay, um, and um, we'll go into that in detail next time, but I surely do hope this is helpful. And once again, I would very much like to thank my friends at Amadeus Flutes.